Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I'm just going through the last few parts of the housekeeping and um, we'll get underway. So let me just bring up the right sheet. That's not helping. still working here we go okay that's the thing i just closed the window so i just need to double check we're still live in facebook just give me one quick second okay great okay thanks for joining me everybody um a good morning from the hunter valley in australia i'm about two hours north of sydney it's spring here, things are coming up, and it's nice to be out and about again. Um, let's just quickly start. Tell me where you're coming from around the world. I see Tom's here. Tom is one of the few Aussies that uh, um, in part of the group. So thanks for joining us again, Tom. Good to see you. Hey, Roger, Southern California, Maine, Diane, Austin, Alberta, Alberta, Canada, I'm assuming. Um, North Carolina, Austin, Texas, St. Louis, San Diego, Ohio, Northern California. We've got lots of people on the West Coast today. Ah, here, Marilyn, first one on the East Coast. Hello, Marilyn. Um, yeah, so great. So today, the inspiration for today's talk started from um, the Facebook shutdown that we had a couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, I just wanted to expand on that a little bit and talk about how um, important it is to think about Facebook as an important tool in your business, but, but not a primary method for anything in the future. Okay, so that's, that's the emphasis and that's where I'm going to start today. So let's just dive in and let's explore it as we go. Okay, so Facebook and Instagram, WhatsApp is all part of the Facebook family. Um, they're important tools, but they can be fickle. Um, last year, this time last year, we were going through... Um, a lot of people getting banned from Facebook, not for anything that they did, but Facebook made some rule changes related to the US election, made things really sensitive. And unfortunately, as unattended consequences, a lot of people got banned from Facebook. And that was a really important lesson for us in our business, but also understanding how um, fickle Facebook can be and the flow on effect of these you know, in many cases, quite minor changes on Facebook and how they affected our businesses. So what we need to do is, is look at how Facebook fits into our business because it still does today. It's a really important part of um, any marketing that you're doing online. Facebook is absolutely still the best value place and the best um, targeting that you can get right now online but it can't be your only strategy. And that's what I wanted to talk through today. So how to protect your business from the, the fickle nature of the you know, social media? Why investing your money in Facebook or Instagram audiences can be a costly mistake. And I'll talk about that. And how to build your business using Facebook and Insta, Instagram without relying on them to help pay your bills. And I think that's the critical step is that they are important tools and they're all part of the marketing mix, but they mustn't be the, the primary method for you paying your bills, okay? So it can't be the primary method of you earning your income. And that's what I'm really concerned about. So that's what we'll talk about today. So um, it was about 10 days ago now, Facebook had a worldwide outage. Now it came from an engineer making a simple change that had dire consequences across the entire Facebook network. And essentially what they did was they turned off the connection between um, the front end of Facebook, what you see on your Facebook page or your app and the servers, and they disconnected it. 
all right? Um, six or seven hours, it was down in total and people were losing their minds, absolutely losing their mind. They were worried about their businesses. They were worried about what's going to happen in the future, all of this thing. And, you know, personally, I wasn't worried. And despite the fact that I have a good part of my business that's focused around generating income using Facebook, um, I wasn't concerned about it because, A, I knew it is most likely going to be a short term thing, whether it was an hour or two or even a couple of days was only going to be short term. But B, while Facebook is a really important tool for me in marketing all of my businesses, if Facebook disappeared tomorrow, I know that my business can, businesses can continue to grow and can continue to thrive. I just need a need to find a new method to replace Facebook. And it's not that, um, you know, Facebook is essential in the business. It's just a simple and effective way to advertise. So why not use it? Okay. So that's what it comes down to. So let me walk through this. So Facebook is a tool. It's not the only tool. And this is the thing I'm really concerned about in the conversations I see with a lot of artists and photographers is that their entire business is built purely around Facebook. They spend all their time and their energy focused on growing their audience on Facebook or on Instagram, okay? Now, I have a problem with that for two reasons. One is you're not owning that space on Facebook, right? You rent the space. So you don't own it and you have no rights to that space. If for any reason they decide that you or your business, and we've seen both. So we see um, individuals who get banned on Facebook from advertising or their business gets banned on Facebook for, from, for advertising, right? There's ways around both, but they are um, timely and they take a lot of effort to fix. So they're not something you want to have to deal with, right? So you, you don't want to be um, banned from Facebook, absolutely. But at the same time, um, you know, if you do get banned, it's not the end of the world. In, 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 and that's a really important thing to do. It is a valuable tool, there's no question. Okay, so personally, I believe Facebook is still the best way best and most reliable way to advertise to your fans, right? But we don't spend money building followings. We don't focus on building your Instagram or your Facebook followers, right? Because like I said before, they've rented, you don't own them and you have no rights to them. If Facebook ban your business page tomorrow, and let's just say you've spent money, let's say you spent $5,000 building up your social following to 20,000 on Facebook, right? Which is huge. That's great. But tomorrow, Facebook bans your page and they delete the page. You, that five grand that you spent is gone. You have no rights to get it back. And the page and the 20,000 followers, again, gone. No rights for you to get that back. It's just tough luck, okay? So if you're going to invest money in growing your fan base or growing your audience, and using Facebook as a tool, use Facebook as a tool to capture something that's much more valuable. And that's why I focus on building email lists, okay? Because the email list you own, it's an asset for you and your business. So when you grow your email list, nobody can take that away from you. If you decide that you don't like MailChimp, you think it's no good for you and you want to move to a different software, whether you work to... Um, you know, Clavio or um, any of the other um, marketing programs that are out there, email marketing programs, you can export all of your data out of MailChimp, walk away from MailChimp and go to a new supplier. Likewise, if you're on Art Storefronts and you decide tomorrow that Art Storefronts isn't for you, you can export all of your customer and contact data out of, out of Art Storefronts before you leave and move to Shopify or to any other platform. It's really easy to do. But if you lose your Facebook page, there is nothing to export. There is nothing to keep. It's gone and it's just tough luck. So you lose that time and investment that you have had in building your following, okay? And that 
is the critical thing that's a real concern for me. And that's, I see lots of people spending money on growing their Facebook followers. And I've done it in the past. I used to do it. And hacks to grow your Instagram following, all that sort of stuff and paying for likes, paying for exposure, all that sort of stuff. The reality is you're only renting the space. You don't own it. So any changes you make are just tough luck if you, if you lose it, okay? And that's the critical step. And I can't be more um, clear about that. It, you, you don't own the Facebook space. The Facebook page is not yours. It's rented from Facebook. You don't own it, okay? So if you focus on building your email list, right? And then building your relationships and building your business, then you have an opportunity to use Facebook to help you build that email list. But like I said earlier, if tomorrow Facebook was no longer, Facebook advertising was no longer available, then we just use a different method of advertising. We could use Google ads, we could use um, ads on Pinterest, we could use a lot of other options, okay? Right, And I know that if Facebook disappeared tomorrow, then there would be a new um, platform that would fill that void. There's no question. So there'd be new opportunities. But at the end of the day, um, the email list is ours and it's about how we use, uh, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or some other platform to help us build that email list. Now, the key right now is that there is no better value place with the customers that you potentially want to target than Facebook. So we continue to use Facebook, but what I'm saying is it's not essential. Okay, if we lose it, we can, we can, we can recover from that. I know in my business, right? Now we have an online art business that's in, in this six figure now, right? the majority of the income that comes from that business comes from the email list. We get money coming from Facebook, but we get that money coming from Facebook because we're marketing to our email list and we're marketing to our people who know who we are through our email list and everything else. So Facebook certainly helps, but at the end of the day, it's not the core of the business. It's not the thing driving the income. The email list is the thing driving the income. That's a huge difference to relying solely on Facebook or relying on your Facebook followers to build your income. So that's really important. Ruthie, um, you should have my email address, but if you don't, just reach out to me on social media. Um, you know, being banned is not the end of the world and there are strategies. We, um, we've actually had two clients that came to us in the last month who were banned and we've managed to find back doors to get them up and running and um, launching advertising campaigns on their behalf so that they can advertise to build their email list. So it is a possibility. If you wanna know more, just shoot me a message. Okay, okay, I can see there's some activity over on the Facebook group, on the Facebook um, Live, which is great. Thanks, Kevin and Alyssa. Nice to see you guys there, thank you. Right, so, when you focus on not using Instagram and Facebook, then life is easier, okay? So I'm just gonna go back a couple of slides because I think this is really important. So how do you protect your business from the fickle nature of social media? You build an email list, okay? You don't invest in growing your Facebook audience or Instagram audience. Now, at the same time, and those of you who have worked with me in the past, we know there are hacks to grow your Instagram audience and your Facebook audience for free as a consequence of growing your um, email list. So we, we encourage you to do that because yes, growing your list, growing your audience, while you don't want to invest money in it, it you, it's worth investing a little bit of time in because the growth of your email list, uh, sorry, your Facebook or your Instagram following means that more people see your work. And the more people that see your work, the more people we can potentially find to help grow your business, okay? Um, so taking that time to in, in grow your audience without spending money 
is worthwhile, but don't spend money growing your Facebook or your Instagram audiences. And I think that's the key message. Don't spend money on it, okay? You can spend a little bit of time on it, but don't spend the money. Okay, and building your business based off your email list is really, really critical. Now, let me come through. So the way we build email lists is two steps, okay? We build an email list by doing a monthly print giveaway or an art giveaway. And then we run ads using Facebook and Instagram to audiences. So people we've ne who've never heard of you, but are interested in work like yours. That's how we do it. And that is the most effective and simple way to grow your audience. And the, the key with this is, and this is the, the conversation I have so many times with, um, with new clients or potential clients is they're so busy just trying to keep up that they're forgetting the most important things. Now, in my mind, the most important thing that you as an artist or a photographer can do is help build the quality, build quality relationships with your audience, okay? So getting to know individual people, getting to them getting to know you and your art through you telling stories, through your emails and through your social posts and people getting to know you. But people are so focused on trying to grow their email list. And, you know, often they're just, that's their, that's all they're looking at. And they're trying to find different hacks and different ways to do it, all of the things that they could potentially do. At the end of the day, they spend all this time focused on that. Well, growing your list is important, but it, it shouldn't be the thing you focus your efforts on. You should find a way to grow your list in a way that it can happen quietly in the background so you can focus your personal efforts on building relationships because it's the building relationships that build the income, okay? Growing your email list is absolutely critical to building your income. But if you don't build relationships with the people on that email list, then the email list doesn't have any value for you. You have to do both. And growing your email list in a way that's low maintenance and low touch points so you don't have to spend hours and hours on them every week and some methods for growing your email list require you to spend a lot of effort on them means that you can focus on the relationships, focus on the people. Because the thing that sells art, and you know this because when you've done a live show or you've been in a gallery, the thing that sells art is you standing here having a conversation one-on-one -on -one with a person, okay? And you can do that in five or 10 minutes when you're standing in front of someone. You can tell them the story about a new work. You can show them the piece. You can explain things, all that sort of stuff. Right? When you're online, it's a lot harder to do the one-on-one -on -one thing. But that is an advantage as well because it means that you can have a conversation with 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 or 20,000 people at the same time and start those conversations and then continue them one-on-one. -on -one. And you can have simultaneously um, you know, 15, 20 conversations at, the, at a time. Now, I can tell you, I have an inbox that I haven't touched this morning because I've been busy preparing for this webinar. And, you know, just since I went to bed in this morning, I've got 12 emails, which are um, replies to automated emails and people engaging about art, right? And that is, you know, it's both work, Absolutely. It's work because you have to reply to these individually. You can't just randomly um, reply and just say, yeah, thanks, heaps, uh, uh, you know, and just give everybody a, a canned answer. You need to reply to each one individually. And what's really interesting is when I read these things, people are telling, the, telling me about the, their personal connection to the art, why it's important to them and all of that. And, you know, often there's a story about a loved one who's died or something like that. But what that tells me is the heart's connecting with people's hearts. That's the thing that matters. So you need to spend your time on replying to those emails, not trying to find those emails in the first place. Okay, so that's the, that's the challenge. And that's the hard bit. Because getting to a point where you've got that momentum means you need to build an, build an email list. And, you know, I often get asked, how many is enough? And there's two answers to that. The, the first answer is, I think once you get somewhere between two and 3,000 people on your email list, you start to see things change for the good in your business. 
Okay, but it's the starting point. It's not the ending point. It's the starting point. Two to 3,000 people, things start to get more interesting. There's no question. But how many people do you need on your email list? Hang on, I've got an email list that's just under 16,000 right now. And I'm spending money every single month growing that email list. Because as I grow the email list, I grow my income. So the answer to the, to the, the long answer to the question is you never stop you will always grow your email list because if you're not growing your email list, you're not growing your business, okay? It is your most important um, marketing asset. Apart from your work is your email list, okay? So let me go through. So building relationships and those of you who've done these webinars before, I'm sure you're sick of hearing me talk about relationships. But I can't think of anything more important for you as an artist to focus on than building relationships with your fans and followers. Nothing that you do is more important than that. Okay. If you sit in a cave and create all day, every day, then what you'll end up at the end of the year is hundreds of new pieces of art that nobody knows about. But if you sit in a cave and create and then tell stories to the people who are interested in your art, then not only will you create, but you'll also sell and you'll start to bring income into your life, okay? And you won't find that selling hard work necessarily if you just tell stories. And I think one of the things that we often get caught up on and one of the things I find really frustrating is and you know it is something i had to learn the hard way too so it's it's a really important lesson is that selling art isn't about selling so i i don't know about you guys but i really hate, hate trying to buy a new car or even buy a new appliance because i hate dealing with salespeople. all right they they talk at you they tell you stuff they don't listen and they push the things that they think are really important. Whereas for me, I'd rather sit down and someone tell me a story about something that connects with me and connects me to the thing that I want to buy. And then I'm happily purchase it. So when it comes to things like cars and things like that, I, I do everything I possibly can to not go near a salesperson. I'll do phone calls, I'll do emails, I'll do everything I possibly can so that I don't have to actually see and talk to these people. All right. But as an artist, it's the complete opposite. For you, people need to connect to you, not just the work. So you need to find a way to get um, people to understand your story, where you're coming from as an artist, the story behind a particular image or artwork. What is it that connects you to that piece? And that helps bridge a gap between you and them and the artwork. And the more that you can bridge those gaps, the better your results are. So when you're focusing on what you do, if you just focus on the people and the stories, then you're going to be a lot further ahead than a lot of other artists. If you focus on numbers or you focus on um, shiny new things, then you get distracted and you don't get effective results because you're just not focused on the right things. Now, the other thing, and you know, I've put this in here and I put this in there. I, I don't know how many times I've said this as well. Patience and persistence are so, so important for you as an artist, right? If you're not patient and you're not persistent, then you won't succeed, right? You will give up before you succeed. For some people, it needs six months worth of patience. Some, it needs two to 12 months. For some people, it will take two years, maybe three years. But if you're patient and persistent, you will get there. I woke up every day for my first three or three and a half years in my business, really not making any income. I was spending more than I was making, right? But I had a long-term plan and I knew that if I push through those hard times, that I get to the other side, okay? And getting to the other side means that you can turn your passion into your business, 
okay? And that's the goal for most of the people that are here today is you ha you're passionate about your creative work, whether it's photography, painting, drawing, it doesn't matter what the creative work is. You're passionate about it and you want to build an income from it. But the question is, um, is not about... Um, I've lost my train of thought. Sorry, Ruthie popped something up in the screen and I've completely lost my tra train of thought. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that, you know, to turn your business, sorry, turn your passion, your art into, your, into a real business requires you to be really, really patient and really, really persistent. That's working every single day, every single month for months and months on end, sometimes years, to get to the point where all of a sudden you've built that momentum. Okay, so that is the key. Now, I'm just going to interrupt for a second and just come back to this conversation. So Ruthie's been banned on Facebook and Marty asked the question, how does one get banned? The reality is for most people, it's just some random thing. It's got absolutely nothing to do with what you've interacted with. Um, of the two people that we dealt with in the last month that were banned, one was banned because they didn't react to a notice from Facebook quick enough and Facebook gave them a chance to um, respond and they didn't react in a timely manner. And because the that Facebook put a limit on it, they got past that limit and all of a sudden they're just banned, right? So that was just something that they missed in their feed and that happens sometimes. The second person got banned um, for an ID reason, they, they weren't able to clarify, show proof of ID that Facebook was happy with, which is just garbage because they had government issued ID, all of that was right. So the reality is when you get banned from Facebook, and this is why this is really important, this is why I wanted to focus on not relying on Facebook or Instagram to pay your bills, is because the reality is you can get banned for absolutely no reason at all. Okay, it's that simple. The majority of the errors and the things that come up from Facebook are driven by um, by bots, so by algorithms. And algorithms are looking for keywords. They're looking for different things. You know, if you've got something that's a little strange in your artwork, I saw someone's photograph of a dog get banned yesterday, and it was just a dog lying on a lounge. It wasn't anything. Um, interesting it wasn't um, any cruelty or anything like that it was just a dog right so I what one of the lessons that I've learned in the last couple of years is don't try and understand why Facebook does things because if you spend all your time focused on the why you'll go mad but you'll also not get anywhere what I try and focus on is okay Facebook have done this how do we find a way to work with that Okay, we'll work around that. And that is the key. So if Ruthie, if you're banned, I think I can help you. I certainly love to have a conversation offline because I know that for the majority of people, the ban isn't um, the end of the line. There are ways around things. Okay, so let's have that conversation. So how do we make our lives easier? We use tools. Okay, now I talked about Facebook as a tool. One of the things that we use to make Facebook and Instagram easier as a tool is scheduling and using Creator Studio. We use Facebook Creator Studio. We use it for two reasons, right? One, it's free, right? So you don't have to pay a monthly subscription to use Facebook Creator Studio. Two, it's built in. So, you know, I've heard people worry in the past about using programs like Later or um, Hootsuite and whether Facebook then penalizes the post because it's been scheduled using an external app. The fact is that this is an internal app. So you can't get penalized for using an internal app. So there's, there's no downside to using those two apps. And uh, to, sorry, to using Creator Studio. The one thing that I always say, and this is something that I say to my clients all the time, is that often people, what they do is they use their Instagram app on their phone and they will schedule a, or they will write a post and they'll post the post from Instagram and then they'll share it to their Facebook page. And this is one thing that I really don't like. And I don't like it for two reasons. One, 
personally, I believe that the majority of artists that are here today and the majority of artists that are working on Facebook um, full stop, for the majority of artists that the people that are actually going to buy and the people that are actually going to provide you with quality leads are on Facebook, not Instagram, okay? So if you make your post for Instagram, and by that, I mean you, you put your image, you put your comment, and then you put your 30 hashtags, then it looks like an Instagram post on Facebook, right? So you're not giving the audience which has the highest potential for you priority, right? So I always suggest that you write the post on Facebook and then you copy it and paste it over into Instagram. And that's really easy to do in Creator Studio because you just open two tabs, one with Facebook, one with Instagram. You write the post in Facebook, then you copy it over to Instagram. But the other reason, which is really important, while we don't use hashtags at the same level on Facebook that we do on Instagram, you can use hashtags, but I would only use two or three hashtags, not 30. But when, while we don't use hashtags to the same level, what we can do on Facebook, which you can't do on Instagram, is you can share a link. So if you share an image and you can see this image here, this is one of my Iceland waterfall images. If I shared this image on Facebook, I could share this image with a link directly to that in my online store. That's going to drive traffic to my online store and it costs me nothing to do. Right. And I always, the other question I get, and we're related to that, and people go, but I've heard if I do, if I share a link, then Facebook shows it to less people. That's fine. All right. Why? Because if Facebook showing it to less people, but some people are clicking through to your website, which is better for you? More people seeing it on Facebook or someone actually going through to your website, potentially buying it? The answer to me is always someone going to your website. Facebook isn't yours. You use it as a tool to help you build a business, right? Don't rely on Facebook to get your traffic. It's a tool. It can help you get your traffic, right? And if you can use Facebook to drive traffic to your website, that's awesome. But don't rely on Facebook as your primary everything, okay? Um. Yeah, Michaela, I've, I've experimented with, Facebook, with Google Ads. There's no question Google Ads are helpful. But I still think that Facebook ads are up here and Google ads are down here when it comes to what we're doing today with art. Okay? The, it's not quite the same place. And it certainly is an alternative. If you're completely banned from Facebook, then we would look at Google ads as an alternative. But I would start with, Google, with Facebook ads always. Okay. Yes. Why do they penalize? Why do they penalize those posts? It's really simple, Diane. Facebook want to keep you on Facebook for longer. The more they keep you on Facebook, the more money they earn. There's no other reason for that. Okay. But that's okay. What you need to do is just accept that as life and share links anyway. And I can tell you, let me just open a post with a link in it. Um, so we do posts every single day. At the moment, we've just upped our posting to twice a day, okay? Now I'm talking about Natalie's um, art. You know, most of you who know me know I, I run a friend of mine's business, Natalie Parker. She's a, um, she's a um, wildlife artist here in Australia. So she paints Australian wildlife that simple. So Natalie's work, we're posting twice a day at the moment, okay? And at least four links a week, where we're linking directly to products in the store. Uh, let me just get rid of that, that's gone quietly. Okay, so, stop that video. So this is just a random post with a link, okay? And why is that making noise? It shouldn't be making noise. Let's stop the video. Someone's eating. Someone's got the microphone turned on. Thank you. Yeah, it sounds like Anderson. Okay, I'm just muting that person. Okay, that's better. I was distracting. I could hear someone chewing. Okay, so this is a post and it's got a link. It's only got 239 engagements, nine comments and three shares. That's not bad. 
but that's a page with 15,000 people following it. So, um, you know, it's not awesome. But, you know, if we get a, you know, here's another post, which is just a video, uh, or just an image here. So this has got 806 engagements, 57 likes, 24 shares. So that's significantly more because it doesn't have a link. But at the end of the day, the link is driving traffic to my website and it cost me nothing to do that. So should I do it? The answer is yes, absolutely. Okay, I'm not, so, yeah, I haven't shared this, the post. Let me share the post for you so you can just see. Let me drag it over here. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing that screen now. Can you, someone just tell me that you can see the Facebook page now? Yes, okay, great. So, okay, so this is the one, this is just a, this is a progress shot. It's um, not quite finished, right? You can see 808 engagements, 57 comments, 24 shares. Now that's pretty good. And that page, um, you know, where I think it's 16,000 likes or just under 16,000 likes, 15,000 likes. Um, it's quite similar, the likes to the Facebook page. But here, this is a, this is a link that's shared. Right, 253, eight and six. It's not the same. There's no question, but those numbers are still pretty good. If we have a look, let me just switch into the page so we can see the insights. Oh yeah, 14,000 followers. Okay, let me just have a quick look. So engagement is likes, um, smiley faces, hugs, share, you know, the, so it's, it's these, let me show you. It's a good question, Nancy. Um, so an engagement on a post, these are engagements. So the ticks, right? So the thumbs ups, come on computer. The thumbs ups and the hearts, they're engagements, okay? Now, let me go back, All right? So here, you know, these, these numbers, there are engagements and the comments and shares. Now, let me just go to one of these bigger posts because I want to show you while we're, while we're in here live, let's do this. Okay. So everybody who has a Facebook page can do this. Click on a post in your, um, in your Facebook feed, one of your posts. Okay. And click on the number here. All right. When you click on that number, you get the option to invite people to follow your page. Now this costs you nothing but time. It's free, it's easy. Now this is how we grow our Facebook likes without spending money, okay? We invite everybody and it takes time. There's no question. I find if you do it based on the um, engagements, it's quicker because um, the lists are smaller. But this is something you can do. Everybody can do this. You can do this once a week. If you're not busy, you can do it more frequently. If you're less busy, but you can see here, but what I was gonna do was bring up the insights. So let's have a quick look. So it's different to just likes. Yes, it's different to likes. Um, um, I, an engagement is anybody who has liked, loved, uh, laughed. It's all of those different things. So let me just bring up insights. Okay, so right now, let's bring that up the full page. I'm not sure I'm not showing it like that. That's a bit weird. I'll just refresh that page and see if it fixes it. Okay, so page insights. Okay, so in the last week, I don't know why. Oh, sorry, this is annoying. It's showing me half the screen. Let me see if I share it on the bigger screen. Share it on the bigger screen. Right, that's it. Now I just got to share this screen. So let me just switch screens, guys. Sorry. Okay, here we go. So you should now still see that Facebook screen. Um, can someone just tell me that we are seeing that screen? Yeah, can you still see that? Yeah, great, thanks, Carol. Okay, so this is the, um, let's go to the overview, start at the top. Okay, so this is for the last month. 137,000 people have seen stuff. 
48,000 people have engaged and we've got 300 new followers, okay? But this is what I really want to show you is your posts, okay? Now, this was the question, you know, does a link affect your reach, okay? So this is a link. Um, this is a link. You know, those reaches are pretty good. Yes, the ones without a link are get higher engagement. There's no question, but that's okay. It's just something we accept because really, and this is what I, you know, one of the key things I think that's really important with what we're doing today, what we're talking about is we're using Facebook as a tool to help us, not as a tool to help Facebook, okay? And I think that's the key message, right? If it's helping us, then we're sharing links. We're doing the things that help us and our business. We're not relying on Facebook, but we're using it as a tool to help us grow our business. And I think that's the key message. And that's the things that I wanted to show you by sh showing you through this, because I think what we do is we often get so hung up on what Facebook cares about. I don't care what Facebook think care about. What I care about is how I can use Facebook in my business to help me grow my business. But at the same time, without relying on Facebook, okay? If tomorrow something comes out that's better than Facebook, Absolutely, I'm going to use it. Right now, I don't see anything better. Okay, there's plenty of things that are in the space, you know, and Clubhouse is one that's in the space, but I don't know whether it's got the longevity to beat Facebook right now. Okay, so Marty, yeah, I think the key with what you're asking, so Marty's asking, can, can I comment on the most effective type of content? right i think the key is to experiment and to be and to vary what you do don't always do the one thing there's no silver bullet do a few different things and see which one works best for you but never concentrate just on one thing and you know often what we do and you can see in the facebook feed that i just showed you you know, we've got um, progress photos, we've got time-lapse videos. Very rarely do we do live videos um, or talking videos where some, Natalie or myself is standing in front of the camera. Um, we don't do that. And, you know, there's a few reasons for that. One of the reasons, obviously, is the fact that I'm running the business on behalf of Natalie. So me standing in front of the camera might just confuse people. But at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is find ways to educate and engage with the audience in the simplest possible way. So do different things, try different things. There's no wrong answer. There's no right answer. Do the things that work for you and your audience. That's the key, okay? So what the, I mentioned this earlier, right? And this is a question I get after every single webinar. I missed the webinar. How do I watch it again? If you missed this webinar or you missed last week's, uh, the, the last webinar or one from three months ago, all of the webinars are in my Facebook group, okay? Now, I shared the link earlier, but I'm going to share it again right now for you so you've got it. If you're not already a member of my Facebook group, join it today. It's free. It costs you nothing. But what it does is allows you access to um, the past webinars, any other resources that I share, any videos that I share on tips and tricks, okay, They're in the Facebook group. So if you want to have a look or you want to try something new or you just want to look at something from the past or you want to remember something I said last time, then have a look at the Facebook group, okay? So we're almost at the end. So I just wanted to talk about quickly because people, people get worried about how many things you need to start building your business online. And I think you really only need three things, okay? One you need a website that has e-commerce functionality built in that you control, okay? So Shopify, out storefronts, a WordPress, a Squarespace store, or even a Wix store, it doesn't matter, but you need to be able to sell stuff without you having to engage, right? People just need to be able to click on something and buy it, right? And that you can control. So you get all the information, you get the person's details, you know, they become your customer. You've got their email address, all of that. Now, Fine Art America might be a great way to sell art, but it's not a great way to build a business because you don't own those clients. Fine Art America owns the clients. It's the same as working with a real gallery. 
if you've got an in-person gallery that you work with and they represent you, you don't have any interaction with the clients. You don't have the email addresses from the clients. The gallery does. The Fine Art America is the same. So you need a, biz, a website that helps you sell your art directly to people and engage with people and collect email addresses. Okay. CRM is just a, a place to keep your email list, right? You need MailChimp or something like that to keep your email list and to be able to send out bulk emails. If we use MailChimp, MailChimp is free for the first 2,000 people. After 2,000, then you start paying. So you get a chance to build your, your business a bit before you have to start paying, okay? And you need a Facebook business page and you need a Facebook business page to help you market, right? And to help you grow and to help you advertise. Okay, but at the end of the day, if Facebook tomorrow was gone, then we'd find another way to market and do the online stuff. But you absolutely need the email list. You absolutely need the website. London, no problem, mate. The replay will be in the Facebook group afterwards, which is what I just finished telling everybody else. Okay, so we're coming to the end. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, what can I do to get more emails coming in from the Facebook ads? The only way to spend, to grow it more quickly, Cheryl, if you want to grow your email list more quickly using Facebook ads, spend more money. It's a simple answer. Um, the more money you spend, the more email addresses you'll collect. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a balance for that. I find that somewhere between, you know, $150, $300 a month is, is, is a good balance that most people can afford to, to sustain. Because the other thing is, this isn't something you do for three months and give up. It's something you do long-term, okay? So if you want to grow your, your email list long-term, then you need to invest money in the long-term, okay? Not just for a, a short period of time and then give up. Okay, so we run a 90-day audience builder program. And the reason it's 90 days is because it takes time for us to learn about your audience, but it also takes time for you to learn because the key with this program is it's not just us helping you generate leads. We help you generate leads and we train you how to use the system so you can do it yourself. I don't want you to have to pay me forever to, do, to build your email list. So what we do is we help you build your email list. We give you a system to help you build your email list. Then we train you how to run it so that you can do it and keep building your email list ongoing. Because as I said earlier, there's no end to growing your email list. You should be growing your email list the entire time you're growing your business. So if you want to grow your email list and you need help and you want someone to help you do this and do it well, okay? Then this is what the 90 day audience builder program is for. So if you're on art storefronts, it's $799. For everybody else, it's 999 US dollars and it's three months and we help you every step of the way. And if you get stuck or you don't understand, then we help you through that. It's really important that we feel that you're confident and that you're building your business, but you have control and that's key. If you're interested, a special offer, which I've extended again in October. If you book an order, artist suitability call and you sign up for our 90 day program, then you get a free one on one Zoom call with me for one hour, just focusing on issues for you and your business. Okay. So that's separate to the 90 day program. It's in addition, it's free. It's normally $999, but we do one hour focused on Zoom on your business and work through any issues, any questions that you have specific to your business. So if you're interested in that, that option is available too. I will share all this in, um, in the group. Um, in the messaging, in the chat, but I'll also send you an email after the fact. I'm happy to answer any questions um, and go from there. Nancy, drop me an email. That's the simplest answer to that question. It's not something I can do right now, but if you drop me an email, we can have a look at that for you. So anybody else have any questions? I'm happy to answer any final questions before we uh, finish up today. Unusually, I'm early, which is good. It's not often that I finish early. Thanks, Debbie. I appreciate that. I'm just going to find that link. Okay. So this is the 90-day audience builder program. If you're interested in the audience builder program and you'd like more information, book a call. Okay. 
If you decide after the call, it's not for you, that's fine. It costs you nothing to book the call, right? We can talk for 20 minutes, talk about you and your business and your circumstances. And if I can't help you, I'll tell you. But if it's something that I can help you with, I will absolutely tell you. Tell you. Yes, it is. London, you're already sorted, mate. We're well and truly on, on the way with you. Okay, June. Yes, I saw that question earlier. Sorry, and I didn't answer it. So, Facebook shops. I don't like them. And this is why, and this is, again, the whole basis of this conversation. The Facebook shop takes the customer control from you and gives it back to Facebook. Right, you want to drive traffic from Facebook to your website, if traffic from Facebook to your email list, driving traffic and sales through Facebook might be a way to get a little bit more growth in your business, but it's giving Facebook more control in your business, and that's the last thing you want to do. So, I don't like Facebook shops, full stop. Okay, I think. They're a tool that you do not need, especially if you've got a website like an art storefronts website. You don't need a Facebook shop, okay? So don't do it. Okay. Thanks, James. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, um, Anderson Glenda. I'm not sure if that's Glenda Anderson or Anderson Glenda. Either way, thanks, guys. Thanks, Cheryl. Um, appreciate your time today. Thank you for joining me. And I'll be back again in two weeks. Not quite sure what we're going to talk about, but we're coming into black... The, the busiest time of the year, Black Friday sales are coming up. So we might talk about um, marketing and sales and um, the things that I think are really important with that. So thank you for your time, guys. Have a lovely day and I appreciate you sharing some time with me this morning. Bye-bye.